Hey everyone, welcome to Awareness with Ashley. My name is Ashley Stewart. I share a first-hand experience of what it's like living with idiopathic intracranial hypertension. You will hear me call this IIH and migraines. I use my own experience to share what living with IIH and migraines is really like. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's podcast slash video episode. I think I might just start calling it the podcast because... It's just the only difference is that YouTube and Facebook and Locals all get a video version of this. Today's topic is going to be one that I actually found on Reddit that I had a few interesting answers for. And that is things that I avoid doing or avoid going to because of migraines. Now either this is because they can trigger a migraine or they can make it so that it's worse. And, you know, some of these I've talked about, but I think the answer to this question may actually surprise a lot of people. So I thought I would go over some of these and demonstrate them in the video. Now, for those of you who are on the podcast, I'm going to do my best to describe what's going on, but I think with this one, it's going to be quite visual. I'm going to try my best to demonstrate some of these things that I'm talking about, but it's going to be very, very hard in word type of situation. So I'm going to do my best, but I don't know where this is going to go. Just touching on the intro here, a few of the things I'm going to be talking about are bars and clubs with loud music, flashing bright lights, strong scents, extreme heat, any type of actual bright lights. It doesn't even need to be just flashing lights, yoga, and staying up too late, as well as salty food. So I'm going to be going over each of one of these and talking about how they can lead to either triggering a migraine, which is basically the thing I kind of stuck to is what out of these could, you know, put me in the situation of having a migraine. It's not necessarily just, you know, what can make a migraine worse. What can make a migraine worse is ignoring the symptoms when you actually first get them. And when you have chronic migraine, this could put you in a part where you haven't had a migraine in a while and all of a sudden you have a migraine for the next several days in a row and you don't know where one starts and one ends and all of that it can be a really really big issue when you're dealing with that chronic migraine in particular a few of these i've talked about in many other videos so you guys know about flashing lights and all of that but some of these i haven't actually discussed before and that's what i want to do today the first one i want to get into is bars or clubs with loud music and or flashing bright lights so if you often go to a club type atmosphere or a bar where there's you know dancing or all of that often there are what are called strobe lights that are on the floor now this can even be in like movie theaters or musical theaters and so like some of these is a matter of okay is it worth the fact that i could get a migraine if I want to go to these and sometimes I'm willing to actually put up with the symptoms of a migraine because there's something I want to see in musical form I actually love to watch musicals so I'm willing to put up with it a little bit but sometimes like it's about okay what do I want to do and what I don't want to do now if I was let's say going on a trip or something somewhere and we were gonna be thinking about doing a musical at the start of the trip I would actually probably push that till try to push it till later in the trip so that if I do happen to get a migraine from whatever flashing lights or whatever there are, I'm not having to deal with it for the majority of the trip and I'm just having to deal with it at the end. When it comes to these these days, it doesn't always necessarily trigger a migraine. So it may and it may not. Like it could lead to a situation where I'm actually dealing with symptoms and sometimes I don't get any symptoms at all. It's very, very unpredictable. But there's a few things that are almost guaranteed to trigger migraines for me and those are the things that I've talked about and like what triggers a migraine for me so these situations could possibly put me into a migraine and they may not at other times it's very these are kind of the more unpredictable things there are some things in here though that are quite predictable so this is probably the best example I can give of what strobe lights would be now I didn't put this on repeat so it's going to obviously not play when I'm done but you've got those like so you've got the flashing lights in the background here and this is something that can trigger a migraine for sure and it doesn't necessarily like for a lot of the strobe lights like you're looking at 
actually something else. The next one, I'm actually going to put a warning on it. So with this one, if you have migraines, please turn away from the screen because this one will probably bug you. It bugged me while I was actually trying to download this particular video. So just be careful, guys, when you're watching this video. If there's, I will warn you if there's something I think that could really cause some problems. These are probably what you would think of as strobe lights. And like I said, there's like a bunch of different types. With the migraines, it can be any bright flashing light or even just bright light in general. Any places with ridiculously bright lights, this can be as simple as like hiding your face in a vehicle at night. So like those LED white lights, in my opinion, should be banned. I live in quite a rural area, so when you're meeting vehicles at night, it can be quite a difference in what you're looking at. Like it's not a whole bunch of lights that you're just used to. Like a car could maybe come every five, ten minutes. When I was little, actually, we were lucky to meet a car every maybe 15 to 20 minutes, even up to half an hour. I remember going on car trips out to a place close to where I lived at the time, and, like, it was a half an hour drive, and we sometimes wouldn't even meet a vehicle. So, when you're driving out on a rural road at night, and you come across any particular type of headlights, the difference in the brightness, even when people remember to turn their high beams down, with these LED lights, I swear, it doesn't matter whether they're on low or high, they're bright no matter what. If you've ever seen these, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. And actually, one of the most common things I've seen on this Reddit thread was just driving at night in general. Now, I don't actually do a lot of driving because I'm just not comfortable with it. Like, I don't know, I still have some times where I'm not feeling 100% to the point where I feel like, I don't know if it's a smart decision, but the point being that, like, driving at night can be really, really hard when you have migraines, and even when you're not experiencing one, because the bright lights and the different changes and brightness can affect and how you feel and all of that. For those of you who are watching on the podcast, you're not be able to see this, but there's a car driving down the road and it's got these LED lights. And for those of you who are looking at the screen right now, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm referring to these very, very bright lights. And these bright lights can be so powerful that they actually can trigger a migraine. And it's not something a lot of people think about, but just keep that in mind when you're on the road that like, Definitely be mindful of your brights and all of that when you're in a rural area. But not only that, but be aware of the car that you're also using because although you have your brights turned down a lot of the times with these LED lights, they can be so powerful. Another thing with the bright lights is that on a very sunny day, even in the winter, you'll see me wearing sunglasses. And I make this joke all of the time, but yeah, I sometimes act like I'm a vampire with light, but light can be a major, major trigger depending on where you are and what you're doing. So just be mindful of that, that your friend with a migraine is probably not going to want to do some of the things that you want to do because it can actually cause us a lot of pain by going and doing those things. Now, like I said, if it's a once in a lifetime event, like you're going to a show on Broadway or you're going to a particular concert that you've wanted to see for years, you're going to take and leave some as you kind of go along with that. Like, you're going to make your decisions based upon what you think your risk benefit is. But, you know, just be mindful of that, that these particular things that you don't even think about are something that your friend with a migraine is going to want to keep in mind. I'm not saying that all of us have bright lights as triggers, but I think it's a pretty common one. The next thing I want to get into is actually strong scents and scented products. This means perfumes or walking down the cleaning aisle. Now, I've actually had this issue ever since I was little because I had childhood asthma growing up, and one of the things that would cause me to have breathing problems is people with heavy perfume or cologne on along with the scented products it seems but now it just adds to this problem now I haven't had any symptoms of or signs of asthma since I think I was 12 oh maybe it was actually a couple years after that I think I was actually in grade 9 so I might have been 14 the last time I really had a major problem but you know I haven't been on medication for it in years I have to be careful with the soaps that I use as it is because I have sensitive skin but 
some scents will cause major problems. This also applies to candles or particular specialty hand soaps you get at different places. A lot of people like to give soap or candles at Christmas and it's just like, thanks for the thought, but I'm not going to be able to use this for a couple of different reasons. So just be mindful of that, that not everybody can use scented products and some of us have to use and be very mindful about that. So just be careful with that one. I know a lot of people sometimes like walking down the Febreze or, you know, soap aisle because it smells so nice but for me I tend to avoid it because not only does it bother me because of always having a problem with scented products but it can actually trigger a migraine and I try to and avoid those aisles if at all possible. I think a lot of people are familiar with the scents as it is because they know a lot of people in their lives who have problems with just you know they get a little sniffly or whatever with scented products brings out their allergies but I don't think people realize quite the connection with scent and migraines and so it's not just oh I'm gonna be snuffly for the next few hours it's no this could trigger a three day long migraine that I really don't want to put up with right at the this point in time the next one I'm gonna get into is extreme heat so this obviously isn't a problem right now as I'm filming this in the middle of winter but on extremely hot days in the middle of summer, and here where I live, it gets to be about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. So that's like, I believe it's like the mid 80s for those of you who in this are in the US. Mid to high 80s to low 100s in the summer. So it can be extremely hot here. One of the misconceptions about Canada is that it's always cold, but it's not. We have pretty hot summers, at least where I am. So these extremely hot days combined with humidity and humidex values can make for the some of the worst migraines. Now, I tend to actually find when it comes to seasons that spring and fall are the hardest because you're dealing with the most weather change patterns. Even sometimes in winter too because you can get ups and downs. And actually I find summer actually okay. But I know I do better when I have somewhere I can escape to that is air conditioning. I don't actually have air conditioning at home. But I work in a place that has air conditioning. And so I really appreciate having the air conditioning on the extremely hot days. Because if I'm at home during the hottest day of the year, it can actually trigger a migraine. And I think that's really important to mention because some of the things that you might not think about are you know enjoying a day out on the beach going to a hot destination this may not be something that your friend or family member with migraines can do very comfortable because of extreme heat sensitivity and actually I think this tends to be an issue with a lot of chronic illness because if you look at weather alerts and extreme heat warnings they often talk about people with chronic illness and so like I think it obviously depends on what type of chronic illness you have but essentially when you're dealing with the chronic illness it can it's definitely a thing that we experience it's not just in there just people don't really understand that those warnings are actually really important to take heed of it's kind of like weather advisories for like smoke in the area when you have like lung conditions and actually it's still about smoke is one of the things that still bothers me in that particular way and so I heed those warnings and actually will wear a mask too when they're, we're dealing with those. Another thing is actually yoga. So I don't do yoga at all anymore because if I'm down with my head like below my chest for any length of time I actually get dizziness, vertigo, and nausea. So I'm going to show you this one particular pose for those of you who are watching on a video. So it's called downward dog pose. In this particular pose, your head is essentially like down below your chest. So like this pose is also what I'm going to demonstrate for like, you'll always see me put on my shoes sitting down with as little bending as possible. If you're ever noticing me doing my job at work, whether it's putting out stock and something is on the bottom shelf, you'll see me kneel down actually before I put the product out because when I do, I don't even want to do it because I've had a migraine the last day. Like yesterday, I had a really bad migraine. For those of you who caught the live this morning, I went over that. Yeah, I'll demonstrate it with my bottle. When you 
tilt your head down like this at least i find it's one of those things that can i find triggers symptoms of a migraine and now i don't actually know if it causes or triggers a migraine for me but because of the symptoms of nausea dizziness vertigo that i get when i bend over like that you'll see me keep my head up as much as i can this one is one that i can't do and it's a common one that is done in yoga it's called the downward dog position okay so in this pose as you can see you've got your head like way down like that and often you push your foot out like this and you come up and you like you're doing this as you breathe and when it comes to the fact with yoga I just can't do this anymore now obviously you might be able to find some that are modified or whatever to not have this but it's a pretty common transition that you do in yoga practice and honestly this hurts because I love yoga so much I miss it so much but it's just not worth feeling sick because of the way I'm feeling with it so you'll see me compensate for this in many areas of my life anytime I have to bend over you'll see me bend at my knees and try to keep my head as straight as possible and not actually bending over because you'll see me almost bounce up immediately if I happen to accidentally bend my head over. I used to actually think this was a side effect more of the acetazolamide at the time when I was on that for IIH, but this has never gone away. It's always been a problem, so I'm actually thinking it's probably just a symptom of of migraines in general, and it could have been an IIH. Like, it is so hard to tell. Like, I remember before I was in remission with IIH, and was also dealing with migraines too. I didn't know which one I was dealing with because there was so many similar symptoms. It was almost impossible to tell the difference. Essentially, you just got to trust that your eye exams are are working properly for it not being IIH. And even then in the case, I, I don't know whether I believe 100% that you can tell on whether someone is truly in remission with the optic nerves i just think that it's not a threat essentially if the optic nerves aren't threatened now i don't know enough about this or the science behind it to go we haven't actually seen someone who doesn't have the optic nerves swelling but the thing is is there's iih without papilledema so there has to be cases where you can still have the raised intracranial pressure without the papilledema where they wouldn't have that as rare as it is it's still got to be a thing so that was more me thinking out loud but i am not 100 percent convinced all the time that you can just simply manage the condition with eye exams when it comes to having another lumbar puncture i'm not interested so i just go with it and as long as my vision isn't threatened i'm not too concerned like there's not really much else that can be done in my from what i understand now what I would like to know is what the morbidities, I guess, above the losing your eyesight with the papilledema are and, you know, what risk you have if you happen to not treat IIH beyond that, I guess, is where I would like science to focus on. And I think they are. It's hard keeping up with IIH research and it's hard keeping up with research in general for me now because I'm so far out beyond my practice with reading scientific studies and keeping up with the latest stuff and it's just a lot of it is I don't have the time. The next one I want to get into is staying out too late. I talked about this many times, so I'm not going to spend much time on this, but my sleep routine is critical to keeping me functional. I will sometimes break this when I'm with family or friends that I haven't seen in a while, but I sometimes pay dearly for staying up past like 10 30 so most nights as i said i go to bed at 9 30 and i'm up at 7 30 i know that when i'm not sleeping well or i have a change in my sleep routine or all of that that it can really be a big issue in trying to keep this part not a problem basically so it can be really hard to manage my life just in general if i'm not managing my sleep correctly. The last one I guess I want to get into is too much salty foods. This more applies to like cured meats and deli meats. I find that if I eat a lot of it that it can cause problems. Now I tend to avoid this just because it really doesn't fit with my diet but there are times where a couple times a year where or I guess a few times a year where we'll have ham and Honestly, like it seems like the high, high sodium content is a really big issue. 
And this is something that I found when I had IIH as well, that I just didn't feel that great after eating ham. I did. I don't really like it. I find it so salty and it's just not my favorite. So I like, I often won't pick it if that's a choice. I try and avoid it as much as I can, but you can't always avoid some of these foods. You just try your best and deal with it as you go. I actually am get, got sick of deli meat because of school. Like it was kind of something easy that I could take when I didn't have access to a fridge. Like now that I have access to a fridge, I can take pretty much whatever I want to and then heat it up in the microwave. But when I went to school, I didn't have access to a fridge. So that got a little difficult to take lunches when you couldn't refrigerate things properly. And you didn't have time to go home for lunch. So now that I have not only time to come home for lunch because I'm so close to where I work, but I have a fridge if I need to take a lunch as well that I and a microwave that I can heat whatever up. So it's not usually something that I'm ever dealing with anymore. I think I'll end it there for today. So just again, if you're wanting to follow me off of YouTube or if you're wanting to follow me across social media, you can find me on Instagram at Awareness with Ashley. TikTok for the short video content and to deal with migraines and IIH's awareness with Ashley, same as Instagram. If you're wanting some more fun video content occasionally, I don't always post on my other account and uh, there will be probably chunks of time where I'm hardly posting like right now. But if you want to follow that account, it's Ashley Enjoys Music. If you're wanting to follow me on Facebook, you can find me at Ashley Stewart and Twitter at Ashley Stewart 94 which is my old handle <laughs> when I because Twitter I think was one of the first things I had to make a handle for so my Instagram actually used to be at Ashley Stewart 94 but I changed it to be more in line with my video content because that's pretty much all I do on Instagram now is my video content if you're wanting to get a hold of me you can get a hold of me by email that's available on my channel as well as my link bio page, which I keep forgetting, but I really should probably start posting that in the description so you guys can find my stuff more easier or more easy, I guess. I have trouble with English sometimes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> That's it for this one. I hope you guys were able to enjoy it. I hope the podcast was able to get a, as much out of this too. If you're watching on the podcast or I guess if you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe, leave a review it helps us grow our reach on there. And if you're wanting to watch some of the stuff today, you can do so across the social media platforms. Also, if you're wanting to support my work, you can do so on Locals, which is ashleystewart.locals.com. It's very similar to Patreon, and it's $2 a month to get access to the supported content, as well as be able to comment and share your own posts in a community of like-minded people who are going through the exact same thing as what we all are right now. As for now, that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps get the show out there. Hope to see you again next week for our next episode. Bye, everyone.